Welcome to Climate Change and Sea Level Rise, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. In this short podcast, we shall introduce some ideas on how climate change affects sea level and what this might mean for our daily lives. Emissions of greenhouse gases, particularly the CO2 released as a result of burning fossil fuels, is responsible for much of the climate change that we see today. This has resulted in small increases in the global temperature. The trends for sea level rise are shown in the diagram, and we can see that most areas are observing a sea level rise, although there are a few exceptions. That brings us to an important point. Ocean surfaces are not flat. They have changes due to gravitational and other effects. Take a look at the Pacific Ocean. We can see that one particular area, that around the islands of Indonesia and the Philippines, has seen a larger than normal sea level rise. Some areas of the world are more vulnerable to sea level rise than others. How do we know sea level is rising, and how fast is it rising? If we can show a rise since 1880, then where did we get all that data? The older data comes from records of tidal gauges that were made from many ports and harbours over the years. More recently, we have been able to take measurements from satellites that are orbiting the Earth. There is some variation in the rise according to location. But the black line represents the average of all these measurements, and we can see that it shows sea level is rising. In fact, the current rise in sea level is about 3.2 millimetres a year. A tidal gauge consists of a float with a rod attached. Markings on the rod are compared to another rod on the land, which is known as the benchmark. When the tide ebbs, the floating rod will fall relative to the benchmark. When the tide flows, it will rise relative to the benchmark. The difference between the two is the tidal range. Satellite measurements give more detail, since tide gauges only show what is happening around a coastline. The satellite data shows us how a map of the ocean surface reveals these ridges and troughs, that the ocean surface is not level. The greatest amount of sea level rise is being caused by thermal expansion. As the oceans get warmer, the water expands and takes up more space, so sea level rises. Thermal expansion alone does not account for all the sea level rise we are observing. Additional water is being added to the oceans through the melting of glaciers. Depending upon global temperature, and thus on climate, the glaciers may be advancing or retreating. If global temperatures are cooling, then the glaciers would advance since more snow has been added at the source than melting at the end of the glacier. However, the glaciers we see today are retreating. This is because the global temperature is warming. That warming means that glaciers are melting faster than snow is being added, and the water is flowing into the oceans, or into the rivers and then into the oceans. Comparing the two slides, we can see that the glacier here is retreating as melting occurs. Photographs of glaciers dating back well over a hundred years show that almost all glaciers are retreating and the rate of retreat is increasing. Melting of glaciers can have other effects that are taking place slowly over time. The melting of land ice means that a large mass is being removed, a weight is being lifted from the land. Now. The Earth's crust floats on a liquid beneath, and so removing a weight will mean that the land will slowly rise. This will actually cause a relative fall in sea level over the years, although it takes place only very slowly. Just as satellite data is being used to map the ocean surface, we can also use satellites to help us map the retreating glaciers, and give us an idea of how much ice is being melted each year. As snow and ice melts, there is an effect which we term a positive feedback. When a land or ocean surface is covered with snow or ice, most of the radiation reaching the Earth will be reflected, and only a small amount will be absorbed as heat. Once the snow melts and the white surface is replaced with a darker surface, then more of the heat is absorbed and less is reflected. This increases the temperature of the oceans, and it so produces a positive effect on feedback. The more snow and ice will melt, the faster it will melt. The amount reflected depends upon albedo. Snow has a high albedo of about 0.9, the ocean about 0.1, the forest about 0.15. 
Suppose we increase the average albedo of the Earth by just a very small amount, say 0.02. This would be enough to produce a global increase in temperature of around 4 degrees Celsius. The data we collect about very large masses of ice, such as the ice sheet on Greenland, shows us that the sheet is actually increasing its rate of melting, even if only very slowly. Why should we be concerned about this, since the science suggests that the melting will take place over several centuries? The thickness of this sheet is up to 2,000 meters in places. That's a lot of potential liquid water. And the total sea level rise of all the sheet melted might be as high as 7.2 meters. Measurements and estimates are often based upon existing rates of CO2 emissions. These rates may increase in the future without mitigation and the effects of additional CO2 in the atmosphere are going to last for many centuries, probably for a thousand years or more. Although the signs of melting are not as clear for the Antarctic landmass that is covered with ice, we should also note that there is a huge amount of ice here that could melt. To give an idea of the amount, we only have to compare the area of the Antarctic with that of the United States. Here the diagram gives an indication of the amount of ice. Note that the vertical scale is shown in kilometers. Parts of the ice sheet here are as thick as th 3 kilometers. Imagine for a moment that the United States was covered with an ice sheet just 1 kilometer thick, over 3,000 feet thick. That is a lot of water. If all the ice sheets and glaciers melted, then we are looking at much larger sea level rises. Estimates are that this rise would be about 61 meters. However, we should note that the average temperature of the Antarctic is around minus 37 degrees Celsius, so that would require huge changes in temperature and climate. Most of the t time we hear of large parts of the Antarctic ice sheet separating and forming large icebergs that slowly melt in the southern oceans. In fact, much of Antarctica is land with mountain ranges. It is the ice sheets that cover the land that would contribute most to sea level rise if they were all to melt. Of course, large masses of ice will melt only slowly, but the scientists are trying to determine if there is a tipping point, and if there is, whether we have reached that point yet. A tipping point is when the melting of the ice sheet would not be stopped because the warming is being increased by positive feedbacks that we are unable to halt. It is possible that Venus lost any liquid water in the past as a result of a positive feedback as CO2 built up in the atmosphere, causing increased warming. Estimates of sea level rise over the next 80 or 90 years show considerable variation. Why is this? The various projections are because there are different scenarios that affect the level of CO2 in the atmosphere, and hence the amount of global warming. They vary from continuing business as usual, showing the high, highest sea level rises, to scenarios where we have taken action to reduce emissions of CO2. Note that even if we stopped using fossil fuels tomorrow, the sea level would still rise for many years because of the CO2 we have already added to the atmosphere. What are some of the effects of sea level rise? Take a state such as Florida, formerly my home and we see a business-as-usual scenario increasing the risk of flooding in coastal areas. The damage and the costs that might arise from serious flooding could be enormous. The combined effect of sea level rise and increased frequency of storms is likely to be a major cause of coastal flooding in the future. To prevent some of the damage we will need to invest heavily in sea defences such as sea walls. However, without action to reduce CO2 emissions, these defences will only be a temporary solution. A rise of one metre is one of the forecasts for 2100. Over two centuries, then, the forecasts for the rises are going to be much higher. Consider a large city such as New Orleans, and we can see here that much of the city would then be below sea level within just two centuries. For many homeowners, the cost of insuring a home is rising fast due to increased damage from climate-related events. Insurers calculate risks, and if the risks are too high, they are reluctant to offer insurance. 
There are areas of the USA where properties built next to the sea cannot be insured because of the risk of damage from sea level rise, sword, storm surges and hurricanes. If you live in the UK, then before purchasing a home near the sea, you might want to check out the risk from coastal flooding. Looking at flood risks is becoming an essential part of purchasing a home. Before purchasing my present home, I looked at the flood risk in the area to ensure my home was not at risk. Sea level rise and coastal storms do not just bring about flooding. Most of the coastline around England consists of soft rocks. Homes built on these sites can find the ground eroded from beneath them, and the home is then lost to the sea. It is possible that sea level rise by the end of the century will mean that many more homes are lost, as the cost of trying to protect them exceeds the value of the homes. They will be abandoned, the land will be lost to the sea. So what have we learned? Sea level rise is taking place and we can measure that rise. The rise is due to thermal expansion of the oceans, melting of glaciers and melting of land ice. All of these are being driven by climate change, and the climate change is being influenced by CO2 emissions as a result of our activities that burn fossil fuels. This ends this short podcast, brought to you by Park Bench Tutors, narrated by David Hopcroft. We hope that you will be encouraged to find out more about sea level rise. Thank you for watching and for listening. Look out for further podcasts on climate change from Park Bench Tutors.